Hi everyone, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. On this channel, we talk about plastic surgery, cosmetic procedures, beauty and beauty standards. I also talk about celebrities and the particular products that they use. So if that sounds good to you, don't get FOMO, make sure to subscribe. In this video, we'll be talking about the legend, Whitney Houston. For those of you who are too young to remember, Whitney Houston was an extremely talented and iconic singer in the 80s, 90s, and beyond. She was glamorous and talented, but also lived a life full of struggle and pain. Whitney was also as beautiful as she was talented. I'm every woman. I'm a survivor. Thank you. In this video, we're going to talk about any possible plastic or cosmetic surgeries that Whitney may have had done. Remember that this video is my opinion only. Nothing I say here I have proof or receipts for. Never use my videos as a way to shame or hate on these celebrities. I've had my own plastic surgery and there's nothing wrong with plastic surgery. Special thank you to Kiki for your amazing work on this video. Whitney Elizabeth Houston was born on August 9th, 1963 in Newark, New Jersey. She is the daughter of Emily Sissy Drinkard, who was a Grammy-winning gospel and soul singer and a member of the Drinkard Sisters and the founder of Sweet Inspirations. Now, Sissy is still alive today, and as of the date of this recording, she would be 90 years old. Whitney's father was John Houston, who was an entertainment manager, and Whitney actually hired him to help negotiate a lot of her deals. Whitney Houston's iconic career began in the 1980s with the release of her self-titled debut album in 1985, and this propelled her to global stardom. Now this album featured the chart toppers, Saving All My Love For You, How Will I Know, Greatest Love Of All, and You Give Good Love. Now Whitney's success soared even higher in the 1992 film, The Bodyguard, which she starred in and also featured her iconic rendition of I Will Always Love You, which became one of the best selling singles of all time. Whitney's amazing voice and undeniable talent earned her numerous awards, including multiple Grammy Awards, AMA Awards, and an Emmy Award for her contributions to the entertainment industry. Now, later in Whitney's career, there were definitely challenges, both personal and professional, but especially personal. But despite facing these personal challenges that affected her later career, her songs like Greatest Love of All and I Want to Dance with Somebody continue to be played on the radio and endure in our minds. Let's look at Whitney's natural beauty traits. I love her gorgeous, large, wide smile. She also has an enviable smile reveal, which is how many teeth you can see when she's smiling casually. I also admire her large, round eyes, which are friendly and open. She looks like the type of person you'd like to come up and talk to. And of course, she had gorgeous, glowing skin. The plastic surgery looks to have started in the years between 1982 and 1984, where I see that her nose has looked to undergone a rhinoplasty. Now, the rhinoplasty was quite subtle, but made substantial changes to her tip. The tip of her nose is no longer bulbous, although it was barely bulbous in the before photo. We see a clear narrowing of her tip from the front point of view. Now from the three quarters point of view, we see that her tip has been bobbed, removing the prominence of her tip completely. I also see smaller nostrils. There was likely a base reduction done to her nose, where surgeons make a small cut at the base of each nostril, remove a section there, and then sew the edges of the skin back together, which narrows the whole nasal base. Now the change to her nose makes sense with this timeline as she was just rising to fame during this time frame. And 1985 was when her first album, the chart topping album, did come out. Now rhinoplasty surgery has become almost a rite of passage for actors and singers at this point. Although I loved her original nose, it was super cute and fit her face as well. Now the next possible change I see is a change to Whitney's eyebrows. Take a look at this comparison photo. I see a higher brow with more of a brow pad. 
I also see more upper eyelid space, which is also a favorable side effect of a traditional brow lift. Now I see a change to Whitney's lower lids. The bit of fat that sat on her lower eyelids that puffed out, very cute, I might add, when she smiled, is now gone. It looks like there may have been a fat-removing lower blepharoplasty performed to remove the fat pads under her eyes. There has been another change to Whitney's nose. Her bridge looks thinner as well as the tip of her nose looking thinner. Her nostrils now also look larger and longer than before. Now this is only because of the relatively smaller nose tip and bridge. Now between 1992 and 1993, Whitney's petite lips have taken on a fuller appearance. Now they didn't really have the traditional lip filler that we see on people today. Back then they used collagen. So I believe that collagen was injected to her upper and lower lips. Now between 1995 and 1996, Whitney's face takes on some rather big changes. Take a look at her cheeks. She goes from a sunken under eye area with just some volume to her mid cheek to a cheek that is laterally prominent and an under eye area that is full. The whole cheek area is high and prominent in the after photo. This look is likely the result of having cheek implants placed. I believe she may have had silicone cheek implants placed and they would have been either malar or submalar implants. Or they could have also been a combined malar and submalar implant shell, which encompasses the whole cheek. Now take a look at Whitney's chin. Does it look longer to you? To me, her chin looks longer. I think that Whitney may have also had a chin implant placed during this period of time. The chin implant elongates her face and makes her face look more mature and sophisticated. And it looks like a couple years later, the chin implant was removed as it's not noticeable in later photos. Now between 1996 and 1997, there has been another aesthetic change to her eyes making Whitney's eyes more narrow and long appearing instead of her previous beautiful round eye shape. It looks like there was a lateral canthoplasty performed. During a lateral canthoplasty, a section of the canthus is altered to raise the eye corners higher, making the eyes appear more slanted or more cat-like. Now we go to 2002, where there appears to be another change to Whitney's eyes. Her upper eyelids look different. The upper eyelid wrinkles and folds have been completely smoothed out, and there is barely a crease left to her upper eyelid. This looks like there was an overly aggressive upper blepharoplasty performed, removing both skin and fat to her upper eyelid. And this has made a huge impact to Whitney's recognizability. The last facial procedure that Whitney appears to have done is a facelift between 2006 and 2007. I see a general pulled appearance to her face, which is a hallmark of the old style of skin-only facelifts. We see a hairline that has moved back with more cheek and forehead reveal as well. Now at this point, Whitney would have been 42 years old, which is admittedly young for a facelift, but many entertainers and actors do have a facelift between their late 30s and their mid 40s. So this is sort of to be expected. Now early facelifts are less typical for people of Whitney's ethnicity. I think it's likely that Whitney's lifestyle played a role in her feeling as though she needed to have a facelift at this point in her life. Now, later in life, we see a change to Whitney's beautiful, natural teeth. And this change is both for functional and cosmetic reasons. This next portion will involve talk of an autopsy. If you are sensitive to that, please skip forward to this timestamp on the screen. At Whitney's autopsy, the coroner reported that Whitney had small amounts of illicit drugs found in her system. It was reported that Whitney was missing 11 of her teeth. 
Tina Brown, the sister of Whitney's ex-husband, Bobby Brown, claimed Whitney knocked her teeth out in binges that went on for days. She said, quote, she loses them in the house when she's out on binges. They cost $6,000 and the dentist has to keep FedExing her a new set. Whitney wore a maxillary dental prosthesis, which sounds like the early type of all on four, although Whitney could have also had dental implants at this time. It's likely that she had a combination of dental implants with a snap-on bridge that snapped on to the front teeth to fill in the missing teeth. Her official cause of death was accidental drowning and substance use and heart issues were involved in her cause of death. Now let's talk about Whitney's possible body plastic surgery. Again, there will be talk of an autopsy, so please skip forward to this timestamp if you don't want to hear about it. Whitney died in Los Angeles on February 11th, 2012, and at the time of her death, her body was covered in scars, injuries, and marks, some of which were later attributed to plastic surgery. The coroner noted that she had outlines of bilateral breast prosthesis and scars from breast implants. Whitney's first possible body plastic surgery was between 1995 and 1996, where I see over-the-muscle breast implants that are small but widely spaced. Now, this isn't the last time that Whitney had breast surgery. As we see here between 1996 and 2000, Whitney looks to have undergone another breast augmentation, this time with implants that are larger in diameter that better fill in the gap in her chest in between the implants. There may have been a third breast augmentation surgery done between 2000 and 2007, where her breasts appear much fuller and even more spherical in shape. Let's add up all of Whitney's possible plastic and cosmetic procedures, and I'll tell you how much it costs to look like Whitney Houston. Now, please remember all prices are based at the high end of the price range. I've also tried my best to adjust the prices for what they would have been back then. First rhinoplasty, 10,000. Brow lift. 10,000, upper blepharoplasty 3,000, lower blepharoplasty 3,000, second rhinoplasty 15,000, collagen to upper and lower lips 2,500, cheek implants 3,500, chin implant 3,000, lateral canthoplasty 5,000, facelift 10,000, maxillary dental prosthesis 6,000, first breast augmentation 6,000, second breast augmentation 10,000, Third breast augmentation, $12,000. Total cost, $99,000. Now, a lot of you probably are wondering what could have led to all these various plastic surgery procedures. She really didn't need all that. She was such a beautiful woman to begin with. And I agree with you completely. I do think that a lot of her early procedures were due to other people's pressure on her to look a certain way. And I think that a lot of her later procedures were probably due to her own pressure on herself. She definitely seemed like she was a perfectionist and demanded the very best of herself. I think that when she failed, she really took it hard. So I think a lot of her later procedures were a reflection of how hard she is on herself and on her appearance. Whitney's impact on the music industry is unparalleled and it really solidified her reputation as one of the greatest vocalists of all time. But her contribution goes further than her remarkable songs, encompassing her powerful stage presence, vocal range, and ability to convey deep emotion through her voice. This video didn't shy away from examining some of the nuances of her transformation through plastic surgery. I hope that you'll have some empathy for the human aspects of her struggles, culminating in a tragically early departure in 2012. Whitney Houston was a force in the music industry, and her talent and beauty shouldn't be forgotten. You all know who this is, huh? Bobby, 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 my baby, my little girl, and mommy loves 